Hey, hello. 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 Well, today I'd like to kind of give you a very quick summary of our campus garden experiment. This is a student initiative and uh, I got a very little kind of uh, field here, a little plot of land to do a small volcano experiment. And what I've done is part of the little plot of land has been doped with volcanic material and the other part has been untreated. So the idea is that if we add little volcanic particles, they have little bubbles, then uh, they will hold the water better in the soil and there will actually be nutrients coming from the volcanic material. There could be potassium and iron and phosphorus being added to the soil and we also believe that more microorganisms will grow around the volcanic particles and that could fix CO2 from the air in the organisms and when they die they actually uh, provide this CO2 to the plants in the soil. So there's multiple positive effects we would expect if we add these volcanic particles and in volcanic areas like on Sicily around Etna and also in the Canary Islands people have used this little trick for many many centuries and it provides really fertile fields and uh, a fertile soil. So here's a little experiment and uh, let's see what the result is. About six weeks ago we planted some beans and there's some clover and uh, two uh, um, to bushes, to berry bushes. So let's have a little look what happened here. So here's our little experiment. And uh, what happened is that this side, these two little uh, parts of the experiment, they were doped with volcanic material and uh, the other side was not. And what we see here is there's first of all a lot more clover and a lot more grass. It's a lot more green. This is yep. the berry bush and the berry bushes don't show a huge difference I believe but um, the overall amount of vegetation is certainly higher here in the part of the experiment that got some volcanic material. What we also see is that uh, the, uh, the <clears throat> The beans here, they look uh, pretty decent. They have uh, only very few dry spots and there has been some dry days over the summer. Yeah. And um, they have grown reasonably well. And uh, on top of that here in the volcanic area, what we also see is mushrooms. Here's one of them. Very many mushrooms. There is a lot of mushrooms, isn't it? And there there's quite one. some big mushrooms. There's the baby one. Here as well. Here's the baby one. Yes, and there's another one, exactly. So, and mushrooms need moisture, obviously. So here, I think we have a good result that um, the volcanic particle does provide a lot more moisture. Uh, the water doesn't evaporate quite so easily. And uh, this makes a huge difference. So let's have a quick look at the other side of the experiment. Here is the untreated um, experimental part and uh, here's the berry bush. The berry bush looks good. Um, overall there is some clover and grass as well but it's less than on the other side. And here's one tiny mushroom only. Yeah. That's the only one I found in one this baby. part. <laughs> oh actually there's another one. See? Yeah. A yeah. tiny mushroom. Yeah. A tiny baby one. But compared to the other side they are rather small and very few of them. Yeah. So in addition, looking here at the beans, the actual um, bean fruit um, is, is rather kind of underdeveloped and many of them have a bit of a dry kind of, uh, have dry leaves, yeah. have dry branches and uh, they suffered a little bit over the dry parts of the summer. Mm. It was wet the last few days but um, a few weeks ago we had some dry week. Um, and um, here you can see that. So it appears to me that they didn't get quite as much water as the other parts of the experiment. And I like to think it's because there was more water being kept in the volcanic particles. And that means there was more water available for the plants for longer. Now here is some of the material we used. So Stella, would you like to show some? Yep. Just take some and this is a uh, crushed up rock, volcanic basaltic rock from uh, Tenerife. And when you come close enough you can see that it has little bubbles.
And this big one here, it's got a long elongate vesicle and this is where water would get stored and even when it's warm the water wouldn't evaporate it's protected in there a lot better and this means that the plants have more access to water when we use these particles and on top of that when the particles decay they give off iron and phosphorus and potassium and that's good for the plants you need to uh, use less fertilizer. It's a steady long-term fertilization and as I said because of these conditions more microorganisms will grow and that is also good and I believe that this is also a little trick to suck some CO2 out of the atmosphere and fix it in the soil and uh, this will help with some of the global warming problems that we're facing right now. So and uh, if you don't have volcanic particles at home maybe you want to use some of this we got this in the garden center and this is artificial volcanic particles. So Stella, could you open your hands? So here, this is uh, made in a factory, but the idea is the same. We have um, um, round blebs, it's uh, kind of like slack, like uh, slack from making steel. And there you see that there's a lot of uh, vesicles in there, bubbles in there. And um, these bubbles, these bubbles hold the water and the material gives off nutrients. So this is why this is very good for making uh, fertile fields. And this has been used, as I said, in um, areas, in volcanic areas, like in Sicily, as well as in the Canary Islands for many, many years, very successfully. So this is the little garden experiment using volcanic particles. And some people have calculated that if we were to use volcanic particles over wide areas in Europe, we could really take a lot of CO2 out of the atmosphere and produce a lot more crops. So potentially this could reduce world hunger and help immensely with our global warming problems that we're facing right now. So. Like yummy chocolate. And yeah, and Stella thinks they look like chocolate. So, and uh, therefore, I think they are kind of appetizing, certainly when they produce something on the yes. field. <laughs> so, thank you very much for your attention, and thanks to the folks from the campus garden for allowing me to do the little experiment and supporting this in this great way. And uh, hopefully, I was able to convince you that using volcanic particles in agriculture and gardening is a really good thing and has a lot of potential for the future. Okay, thanks a million, bye bye, bye. and all the very best.